right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Walter Bond, who is in Florida. How are you doing, Walter? Fantastic, John. Excellent. And Walter is a business coach, speaker, author, and former NBA player as well. And we're going to talk about motivation today. And let's face it, um, you know, Walter, to reach, to reach professional level sports, I mean, to get to the NBA, I mean, it's a dream of a lot of people, just like it is to get to major league, um, you know, football or, or whatever. Um, but it does require a, an, a, a level of motivation beyond what, what a lot of people either have or are able to tap into. So what, was, what, was, what were you able to do to tap into that extra level of motivation to drive you to the, to the pinnacle of your sport? Well, you know, John, you know, first of all, it's a journey. And I was just on a call earlier. Hopefully my voice is not too raspy. You know, I seem to not at all. talk all day these days. But, um, you know, I was telling the guy, a government contractor, that when I made it to the NBA, I was 23 years old. And that's the first time I got paid. The first time I started playing basketball and pursuing the NBA, you know, I was about nine, eight or nine. So you're talking about basically 15 years of work before I made a dime, right? Mm -hmm. So that kind of commitment is not normal. And I'm talking about every day, all day. And that's what it took, though. You know, and very few people, honestly, are willing to put that kind of time in. And so the, the goal of being the best in the world at anything requires commitment and just unbelievable work over a long period of time. And, and very few people are either willing or just don't know the level of commitment it takes to really become great at anything. And so the journey mm -hmm. has ups and downs, twists and turns, and you really need the commitment yourself but I tell anyone, success is a team sport. And it's important to really have a posse or some people mm -hmm. around you that can keep you going in those dark days, that can provide guidance, support, encouragement. Um, you know, so it, it's really a team effort, you know, to make the NBA. Yeah, and I think and what I love about your what I love about your message, Walter, is that unfortunately today we live in this shortcut culture where everything is supposed to be easy and comes easy. It's like I don't have to do anything. I can, I can just start going on Instagram and become like an Insta famous person from doing. And I think that, and and unfortunately, yes, there are examples of people who do that, but they are the very very small minority, and it's not true for the rest of the people. And therefore, I think the message of hard work and the fact that things don't come easy and don't come immediately. It's just a really important message that people need to hear. Yeah, you know, and I'll give you the analogy, John, is that, you know, this microwave oven in my house, mm -hmm. right? So zap your food in seconds. And it's gonna be hot. But if you want to cook a meal that's delicious, I've never had a great meal in a microwave. Okay. <laughs> it takes time right, to, to, to brine the chicken. It takes time to season and smoke the chicken. It takes time to cook a brisket, right? And that's just yeah. how success is. And if you're trying to do it quickly, if you're trying to do it fast, I question, even if you have success, can you sustain it, right? Yeah. So sometimes the journey there is not just about achieving success, it's really about sustaining success as well. And typically, and inheritance gain quickly will not be blessed in the end. So I've seen people, you know, achieve success fast, but I have not seen a pattern of them being able to sustain success. So the whole moral of the story, you want to have the journey because when you get there, you'll be able to have some staying power as well. Yeah, no, I think that I think that's a fantastic message. And so how did you sustain yourself during the journey? Because there had to be points of your journey where you were, you were like, uh, you know, I've been doing this a long time. I'm not, uh, I'm not where I would like to be right now. Or, or maybe you have some obstacles, maybe injuries or whatever. How do you, how do you get yourself and and pick yourself up and move yourself forward when the going gets tough? Because I do think a lot of times, you know, you know, 
you know, people, there's obstacles that will obviously knock people off track and not everybody's able to kind of regather themselves and move on. Well, if you have the right mindset from the beginning, when you face adversity or if you have setbacks, they don't bother you as much because you're prepared for the journey. So, for example, you know, my goal was to play in the NBA, but I wanted to be successful outside of sports. And so mm-hmm. I wanted to make, this was my goal. I wanted to make more money in business than I did in sports. So when my career ended, you know, my wife and I was able to em- embark and attack the next phase of life, being equipped, understanding the journey, right? Mm-hmm. So it took us three years to even get traction in our business, right? I just wrote a book, Swim. I mean, it's taken a whole year to get the traction for the book. And so if you don't understand the, the, the concept of time and really what it takes to be successful, many people sabotage themselves just because they don't understand. And they could be setting up something beautiful, but get discouraged quickly and give up fast when they're right on track. And so if I can give anyone a message today is that you got to live decade to decade. Now, I know mm-hmm. a lot of people don't want to hear that because we live in this get rich quick overnight, you know, Instagram sensation. But the truth is, if you get anything out of what I'm really preaching today is that you got to live decade to decade. So for example, I've been speaking for 20 years. Mm-hmm. I feel like we've just laid the foundation, right? And this, the fact that we just laid the foundation really tempers my expectation as we embark on this journey of building something amazing, supernatural. So most people who don't understand success really don't understand time, right? Mm-hmm. So living decade to decade is probably the best way to look at your life and your career. Yeah, and, and I think that's such an incredibly important point, because as I said earlier, you know, we live in this shortcut culture where everything is come fast. But the reality is, for most people, any, anything good takes time, and things always take longer than, than you would like them to anyway. So, I mean, embracing that is critical, absolutely. Um, and you and you just referenced your book. The book's called Swim, How a Shark, a Sucker Fish, and a Parasite Teach You Leadership, Mentoring, and Next Level Success. Yeah, it's fantastic. Um, absolutely. Um, so what is um, so why did you why did you pick when you did this book? Why did you pick a, a shark, sucker fish, and a parasite? Because um, that's maybe surprising to some people. Well, you know, John, it was organic, you know, and mm-hmm. I think that's why it's done so well. Um, it's being distributed all over the world. Uh, the, the publisher, Wiley, is thrilled. Um, they told me ahead of time, it takes most authors about five years for a book to take off. Yeah. You know, we, we, we've sold 10,000 copies in one year. Wow. And yeah. um, it was organic. You know, a lot of authors say, hey, I need to write a book. What is it going to be about? That's not, not what happened with me. I went fishing one day, and I caught a sucker fish. And I asked the captain, I was like, man, this is an ugly little weak fish. <laughs> You know, how does it make it in the ocean? And the captain goes, well, it's a sucker fish. It has a suction on the top of his head, and it waits for a shark to come by. And that intrigued me. I said, well, what do you mean? He says, well, when a shark comes by, it connects to the shark, and they work in tandem with the shark. It's like a symbiotic relationship. And then I went home, John, and I did some more research on sharks. And I found out the sharks are the most fascinating creatures in the ocean. And then I did more research on the relationship of the shark and the sucker fish. And then I began to realize that, you know what? Sucker fish get free rides in the ocean and they get to eat mm. the scraps every time they make a kill, but they got a job to do. The shark needs them. No matter how big and powerful the shark is, they need sucker fish to protect them from parasites. And all of a sudden, man, I put it all together. And I was like, man, this is a brilliant metaphor for coaching and mentoring. And it's a brilliant metaphor for how to be successful. And so inside the book, we created what we call the sacred six. Mm-hmm. And that really teaches someone how sharks run the ocean. And the one is sharks never stop moving, right? They just outwork right. the other fish. Two, sharks are positive. You know, they only look up, they never look down. So when a person gets a hold of the sacred six, we can almost guarantee them success if they execute these six you know, principles of our sacred six. And we wrote it as a parable, right? So it's real life people on a fishing trip. And the way the story unfolds, everyone can identify with one of the characters. So for example, the star of the book is a guy named Drew. 
Drew grew up rough on, a little insecure, but then he yeah. got a mentor. He got mm-hmm. connected to someone who kind of taught him the way to be successful. And he gets on his fishing trip with a high school buddy who was kind of like a clean cut fat guy who was very successful in corporate America. And uh, Drew was a little, um, I'm sorry, Scotty, which is Drew's yeah. son-in-law was a little insecure about going on the trip. So it, it's a great story. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I've had business people call me and said, man, this book touched my soul, right? Because yeah. it's a great story and it's very real. Um, but the I shark see. sucker fishing the parasite, it was organic. I, I went fishing and that's how I came up with the idea. No, I, I love that. I love that. And I, and I love the idea too of um, the idea of, of the symbiotic relationship and also the, the mentoring part because I do think, Walter, I think people underestimate the power of mentorship. And I think in the world we live in today, you know, having really good, positive mentors and maybe more than one is, is, is going to really separate people who end up having a successful life and those who don't. And John, you know, to your point, we make that very clear in the book. You know, I'm a guy who played pro sports. Mm-hmm. He needed support. I mean, I needed my mom, my dad, my high school coach, my college coach. Uh, I needed trainers. I needed my agent. I mean, I needed my wife. I mean, it was just like a a whole (laughs) team of people. And you needed them because pro sports is very stressful. You got to make a million different decisions. You got to manage your your career. You got to overcome injuries. You know, people have no idea. You know, even in high school, you got to choose the right college. I mean, you got to manage your college career, the journey of making it to the NBA, you cannot do it by yourself. And the same thing has been true with my corporate career. I mean, we work with speakers bureaus, we have literary agents. I mean, we got a whole host of people. When people see Walter Vaughn and they see the book and the success we've had, they have no clue how much work, work my wife has done. (laughs) <laughs> right? They have no clue how much work my daughter has done. They have no clue how much others have contributed to the success. And I'm always giving, you know, credit to the people who've helped. So the bottom line is, you can't do anything on your own, right? And if you think you can, you're really crippling yourself from ever really being successful because right. you even try to do something special by yourself. Tiger Woods needed people. Michael Jordan yeah. needed Mm-hmm. Right, we all need some, Beyonce needs people. Right, you cannot be successful all alone. Yeah, and and I think it's a it's a great message too. Is that I think sometimes people are either don't know how to or re- reluctant to reach out and ask for that help because maybe they're not sure that. I mean, it's a little bit of a vulnerable thing to do too, but maybe they're not sure how people will react. But I think generally speaking, when you do ask people for help um most people will be pretty accommodating to you because it's i mean it's a compliment to them but most people are have a goodness in them that they will you know help and and uh, you know give their experience to other people the, the reality is the shark is set the fish in a parasite you know really represents three kind of people and so we've done so much with the book uh, john it, it, it was um not only is it a self-help book it also teaches leadership and mentorship all at the same time. It also teaches you the three kind of people, right? Some people mm-hmm. are sharks, which means they are just very successful. They just got mm-hmm. it, right? Some people are sucker fish, which means they got potential, but they need a little bit more support, a little bit more tutelage, a little bit more coaching. And some mm-hmm. people are parasites, right? They don't care about anybody else but themselves. And all they do is take and they never give, right? So when you get done with the book, Swim, you know what leadership is all about. You know what mentorship is all about. You know what it means to be successful, but you also understand that we got to be careful of parasites. Yeah. Because the sucker fish connects to you, and so does the parasite. And in our journey, as we deal with people, we got to know the difference. We got to understand who's connected to us, who's good for us, and it's, we're good for them. And we got to understand who might be connected to us who's not yeah. good for us, right? So mm-hmm. the, the life lessons that we've been able to convey in the book have been touching, and it's the only reason that it, it's right. become a bestseller, only reason. Yeah. 
And and on that point of, of, of parasites and looking at people who are connected with you who maybe are, are, not, uh, are not a positive thing in your life, I think one of the questions you always have to ask yourself is, what purpose are they serving for you? Because oftentimes it's not, um, you're choosing to have them in your life. So um, you're actually to blame for that person being in your life. So you have to ask yourself, why are, why, what purpose is it serving you and why do you feel the need to have them there? And the greatest example I can give you is, you know, you hear a lot of ladies, I cannot believe I dated that guy. Yeah. Right? Or I can't believe that I broke up with him and started dating him again. I must, mm -hmm. I must have been at a low point in my life. And so, right. you know, a lot of times you, when, when, when you hear that dialogue, you know, they blame the boyfriend. And to your point, it's like, come on now, we got to take some accountability that mm -hmm. what was going on in me that allowed me to receive a parasite and let them latch on and stay latched on. Yeah. You know, some people like to fix people. You know, we've mm -hmm. met those people, you know, their whole lives, their self-esteem is based on fixing somebody else. And to me, that's dangerous because if I'm entering into a relationship and the whole goal is so I can fix somebody, <laughs> that's, a, that's a relationship that's doomed from the beginning. You know, yeah. any relationship mm -hmm. is gonna be healthy. I'm not in this relationship to fix somebody. I'm in this relationship and I'm going to focus on making sure that I'm healthy emotionally and psychologically. And hopefully mm -hmm. I got a mate that I'm connected yeah. to that's healthy socially, psychologically, emotionally, spiritually. And with you being healthy, me being healthy, this relationship will be healthy. If you enter into any relationship trying to fix somebody or only doing it because somebody needs you. And yeah. I've worked with a lot of people. I coach a lot of people. Those relationships are very draining, right? Those relationships are very stressful. And those relationships, when they eventually come to an end, mm -hmm. this person has sucked a whole lot out of you. Yeah, yeah, now you're the one who needs the help. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's fascinating because I do think, and what you mentioned about accountability, I think that's where it all comes down to in the end of the day is that, we have to take complete accountability for where we are in our lives, right? And, you know, so if you are trying to aim for something big and you're not there yet, well, you know, that's on you. You need to keep going, as you said, on the journey. If you have people in your orbit who are, who are not positive influences, again, that's on you. You're keeping them in your orbit. And I think oftentimes people think taking personal accountability and having some self-awareness, like that's a tough thing, but it's actually a very liberating thing. It is. And accountability is where we mature. And if you ever find mm -hmm. a person who's immature, it's typically because they just don't have any level of accountability. And it, 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 just to be able to look in the mirror and say, man, I screwed up or I made a mistake or I was wrong is very rewarding, is very liberating, and it really heals you, right? And so yeah. as long as we can justify, as long as we can make excuses, we're not going to be able to ever be in a position for transformation. So, for example, when I sat on the bench in college, you know, some of my teammates, you know, sat there on the bench and said, you know, this is political. You know, co coaches, you know, full of it. Yeah. And I sat there on the bench and had those thoughts to be very, very transparent. Of course. And I talked to my dad and he was like, well, son, how does your coach get paid? And I was like, well, he gets paid to win. My dad was like, okay, well, if he gets paid to win, if you can help him win, you're <laughs> going to play. And so I needed help with accountability, right? I needed help being, looking at it the right way. And so that's why I talk about accountability and support because that's not always the case. You know, sometimes you reach out to people and they co-sign with you, even though you're wrong, right? Sometimes mm -hmm. you reach out to people and if they don't hold you accountable or if they don't challenge you sometimes, you know, those aren't the right people in your corner. Yeah. Right? So my dad could have easily agree with me and, you know what, son, let's let's transfer and let's move. And, you know, yeah. you, you avoid those tough situations. And to me, let me let me make this clear. Yeah. Adversity will increase your value if you let it. Right? Facing fear is faster. So in the book Swim, man, we got all kind of anecdotes. And that's a big one. Facing fear is faster. You know, as long as we avoid the things we're afraid of, you know, we're, 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 we're going to be kept away from our potential. 
And yeah. I had to confront some things in my own journey. And that's why we made sure we put everything in the book so people understand, like, look, man, when, when, when someone reaches the top, right, when someone reaches the pinnacle, celebrate them because they didn't quit. Because yes. you know they had adversity along the way. Don't celebrate them because they're so talented. Don't celebrate them because, you know, you, you just admire them. Celebrate them that they had the, res the, the resilience to fight yeah. through that adversity. And that's how they got there. Because you better believe to be the best in the world, you're going to face some adversity. You know, right now, you know, the whole world is facing adversity. <laughs> but here's that's the true. truth, though, John. Let's, let, let's put it on the table. Yeah. For those of us who have the right mental stamina, and that's why we teach the mark shark mindset. Sharks never stop moving forward or they die. Think about that metaphor. Mm. That's mm. why people love the book Swim. Sharks never stop moving forward. That's how they breathe. As they move through the ocean, the, 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 the water goes over their, 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 their gills, and that's how they get their breath, by keeping them moving. So when adversity hits you, keep moving. Right? Mm. Divorce hits you, keep moving. Bankruptcy, keep moving. You got fired, keep moving because that's how you breathe. That's how you stay alive. So the shark mindset, man, that, that, that we came up with in the sacred six in the book Swim has been very liberating. And here's my final comment. Yeah. Uh, one of the characters is a guy named Paul. And we built this character very carefully. And this, the ending is what touches people because we think that Paul is very successful. We think Paul represents the capitalist society in mm -hmm. which we live, right? And at the end of the book, there's a little bit of a spin where we realize that Paul's not nearly as successful as we thought he was, right? right. So when I get the, the, the business people calling me back, that is what touches them because many people identify with Paul and they realize like, uh oh, like what are you what are you saying? Like what are you and so there's a little bit of some self-discovery all laced in the book. Um that we all need to have self-discovery. And yes. I, I'm just yeah. thankful that the book was so organic that I know it came from God. I hate to be too spiritual right now, but right. the way the book came together, the way the story flows, the way people are being touched by the book swim is confirmed to me that this was this was just the book that God wanted me to write. Yes, no, that's that's beautiful. Thank you so much, Walter. Um, again, just for everybody, the book is called Swim, How a Shark, a Suckerfish and a Parasite Teach You Leadership, Mentoring and Next Level Success. Walter Bond, it is on Amazon and all good uh, uh, book retailers. Um, all of Walter's information and a link to the book will be below this video. But before we go, Walter, just tell people a little bit more about what you do these days. Well, you know, currently, you know, we've been able to really take advantage of the coronavirus. And again, sharks only look up, they never look down. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I've been the, I've been an award-winning keynote speaker for 15, no, 19 years. Right. And I've been on the road keynoting a long time. And I've always wanted to get around to finishing off some trainings that we kind of had on the shelf. And we finally finished them. So we have a teamwork methodology called IT. Well, we basically built a blueprint for business leaders to build a high-performing team. And we are in front of Home Depot, we're in front of Procter & Gamble, we're in front of um, um, Honda, and our clients are loving it because they've never seen anything like it. And being a former NBA ball player, John, I was blown away when I got into training and development and everybody's talking about leadership. And I'm like, wait a minute, what about teamwork? In fact, yeah. if you go to a bookstore, the ratio of leadership books the teamwork books is ridiculous. And mm -hmm. my thought is, that's why people have high turnover. That's why you have apathy. That's why you have attrition. That's why you have poor engagement. That's why you have misalignment. People don't like their team. <laughs> but we built something that's really helping business leaders understand how a high-performing team functions. And we break it all down. And all you got to do is pick it up, learn it, and drive your team and build a high performance team. And so that, that teamwork methodology um, probably is my most, um, uh, other than swim, I mean, swim has been amazing, but you know, being a former NBA ball player, being able to teach the world teamwork, to me, we're getting close to, like, this is my purpose. 
is, mm -hmm. is probably probably the best way I can describe that. Yeah, no, this is this fantastic. Thank you so much, Walter. Thank you for sharing your your book and your story uh, with our audience. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. I will see you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you.